So the old bath's out the garage. The other one's now in front of the house, the popular. So uh, I'm gonna uh, have a go, I'm gonna move it again in a minute. Just so I can get the door open wide and I'm gonna get the um, door card off and uh, see if I can figure out what's causing the, uh, the door not to lock. Hopefully it's something simple like the rods. Uh, then I'm gonna decide I'm gonna leave it out. So we'll be back in a minute. I'll reposition the camera, just move the car a little bit and then uh, see what we can do with it. I'll put the number plates on as well, I think. Right, I'm gonna start with uh, taking the door card off. There are, I'm sure you've seen videos about to take door cards off, so I'm not gonna go through a depth again with it. Screws. One, two. So as you know, this doesn't, uh, the door doesn't lock for some reason. And I'm hoping it's the rods that have popped off, as I mentioned before. Get in here, get this started. And once you've got it started, it will just pull off. Right, so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to unclip. I can't really bring the camera around there. There's no room. I'm going to unclip the handle with a little retaining clip. And then it just pulls off. This is. <laughs> Always when it's on camera, it takes longer, that's it. And then, of course, you have to push that out. Take the uh, electrical connection off of there. That's it. And that's that off. Put that to one side. Right, we've got a torch here somewhere. Let's wind the window up first. Alright, interesting that there's no um, protection on there. Obviously, the thing should be on there. It isn't so this someone's obviously had this off before now let's have a look in here hmm. i don't see anything obvious oh no hang on yeah there's only we've got a rod missing the rear rod and the rear rod is the one that operates the um the lock and it's completely missing can't actually see it at all Yeah, the whole rod is gone, including the little clip. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lock, take this piece of the lock out, uh, and have a look. I think I've got spare ones of those because that's quite warm there as well. 2016 car. No, I don't understand this. this is, unless this is a replacement door, it seems to be in really dirty condition. I don't really understand who's been messing with this. It's not lying in the bottom of the door or anything, the rod. So if it has, someone hasn't, it hasn't popped off, someone's taken that off. I may even have to take the handle out. We'll see. Anyway, I'm, going, I'm not going to film every second of this. We'll, um, we'll come back in a minute once I've uh, got that lock off. Okay, just a bit of an update. So what I've done, it was easier to take off the handle. So I've taken the handle off. Um, when, you, when the handle's in, um, you've got that way around, sorry, that way around. Uh, the one that's on this side, 
the near, nearest to, to you, basically. You can't get the handle in when that one uh, is attached. So I had to un I take that one out before I get the handle out. When you put a new handle in, the handle goes in like that. So the, the far one, which is the one that operates the lock, is the one that um, you leave on. Because, because that's the back one, it's quite difficult to get to. So the only thing you need to do is then slip it on um, once you get inside. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I've got a big box down, two big boxes down here, full of spare bits of handles and bits and pieces. So what I'm gonna do is uh, take the bits off that I need and put on this good handle, get that back um, rod on, and then put the handle back in. I can then reinsert the front rod which is just to open and close the car. Uh, and then hopefully it should uh, it should all work once it's connected up back onto the lock again. So I'm gonna go on to time-lapse now for a bit. If you wanna see how to get these handles out, there is another video if you look at my other videos. There's no need for me to go through it all again now. All right, so I've got the, I've got the rod on. So it was a bit of a pig to get the old one out because you have to push it in from the back. Uh, pinch, sorry, pinch it in from the front with some pliers to be able to then prise it out the front. I've cut my finger up, so I've got blood all over the handle now as well. And that one, I had to take that out of another handle, that piece there. Um, they always break. That's the bit that when your door handle, when you pull your door handle, your door don't open. That's because that rod has come out of that. They're pretty much one use only. So what I tend to do sometimes is I'll put a feed a, um, a thin cable tie around it and it's enough to keep it in place and doesn't affect the operating of the door um, hopefully I won't need that but as I say I'm not going to uh, film me putting this in because we've got other videos of, uh, of that being done so I'm going to get this handle back in and then feed the rod onto it and uh, then we can connect these the other end it's imperative you get these the right way around as well for these rods um, so I'm going to do that now uh, I'll do that on time lapse. Okay, everything's back in now. So I've screwed the, put the handle back in, put, done that screw up there, um, screwed the locks back in, in there. I don't think you can see it, but you might be seeing, yeah, you can see the red rod there, the blue rod's behind it, although you can't see it. They're all uh, in. So that, that front rod there, the one with the red clip, is um, that is the one that operates the door handle, so that will open and close the door. Uh, if that comes off, which it often does, um, at the top, up there somewhere. That's where it comes off. See where it goes into that little white thing? It's that white thing that uh, weakens. It's just like a one use only. And that's the thing that uh, you have to get a cable tie around it to hold it in position, which I've done quite a few times. Uh, and then, so that one's a, ha that one's a handle. Uh, the back one, which I don't think you can see here. I can focus on it. No, it won't focus on it. But there's the back, oh yeah, you can just about see it there, behind a slight, a slight angle. Uh, that's the one that was missing completely. So that one is the one that operates the lock. So whether you use the remote key for the lock or whether you use the key, as I've got, because I've only got that key at the moment, um, that's the one that operates the lock. So obviously if you're using the remote key, uh, then the, the door lock itself, the electrical connection on the lock itself will activate which will then lock the door, otherwise you're doing it manually with a key. I know I'm stating the obvious, but I thought I'd explain anyway. So I haven't tried it yet, so I'm gonna give it a try now. First of all, it opens and closes. Sometimes with the con constant opening and closing like that, that rod will come off. So I'm gonna leave that door card off for the time being, because the chances are it might come off. And if it does, then I need to uh, put that cable tight. So I put the key in, I can't even think which way to turn it. Oh, that sounded good. It's locked. Excellent. It works. Yep. 
works a treat. Excellent, so that means I can keep the car outside now. I don't need to put it in the garage. So that's taken me about half an hour to do that. Um, they are a horrible job, I hate doing them. I've done lots of them for other people and they're just a horrible, horrible job. M more so when uh, the handles are broken and then of course you have to take the handles off. I've got it down to a fine art taking the handle off. Now there is an act to it. Um, if you watch one of my earlier videos on how to do it, um, I made a hash of it a couple of times or more than a couple of times, but I've left that video up. Um, I probably should do another video really on how to do it properly. Um, Cause what you have to do is uh, you have to slide it, slide it out towards the front of the car and then push it down. And that's that way it will, it releases from all the different shaped bits of metal in the actual door itself. But I'll come to that one more uh, another time. Um, so yeah, so what I'm going to do now, um, I've had to take off the tripod. I've got a second hand tripod, which I got for free about a year ago and it's rubbish and it's just fallen apart. So I'm going to end up damaging my phone. So until I buy a new one, it's going to have to be handheld only, I'm afraid. Um, excuse me, I've got hiccups now. So what am I going to do now? I might, I might reverse it back, uh, give it a bit of a clean actually. I want to give it a clean inside just to try and get some of the dirt out of there. I might do that anyway. Obviously, I'm not going to film doing that. Um, one thing I noticed today, which I hadn't noticed before, is there is also a dent in the in the wing. Now, again, because I'm going to get that door repaired, I'm going to get them to repair the wing. It's not worth me putting another wing on. I've got a wing, but I don't really see much point in putting it on. So I'm going to clean the inside. I'm going to get all this gunk off the windscreens, front and back windscreen, put the number plates on, uh, and then I think we'll probably be done for the day. Car. Taking the mats out and just picking up all the rubbish out that's on the seats and on the floor and what have you. And I noticed something else which I didn't know about. The passenger side seat belt's been cut as well. What's that all about? Look at it. Never noticed that. So it's not only the driver's side that's been cut, it's the passenger side as well. How weird. How bizarre is this? I'm gonna have a go before I Hoover. I'm gonna have a go. I'll get that off or whatever that is so as I have I know I have got one seat belt but as I've got to do both I might as well buy both I suppose to say that I've just gone over that with um, a product that you can get in uh, pound shops and what have you called elbow grease uh, a couple of little bits there still but it's uh, it's taken that off I'm pleased to say I mean look at the snake that's in here look at it I mean a lot some of that's tobacco ash but Whoever had this car, it really hasn't looked after it. Terrible, terrible. It will be pristine by the time I finish with it. I promise you. Even that's, even that's damaged. Might even have to replace that at some point. It's just got scratches on it. I think someone's had their feet up on it. So heaven knows what's done there. Looks like someone's cut that with a knife. Who knows? Who knows the sort of people that get these cars sometimes. It is a shame, but there you go. Right, I'm gonna get the hoover out, give it a good hoover, try and give it a bit of a clean, although I'm gonna get it professionally valeted to try and get rid of the smell of the smoke. Funnily enough, the smell is starting to go anyway. I've got the windows open and taking the mats out has helped. And there was also a, a dog end in there, which didn't help, There's still bits of tobacco in there. But uh, yeah, I will get it, I will get it clean. I'm not going to clean it on the outside for the time being, but I'm certainly going to give it a good clean on the inside. Obviously, this is only a, a part-time um, working on this today, because normally I would be working on the pop, but for the time being, I'm going to go back on the pop on Monday. I'll be doing working on the pop on Monday. Um, now, I'm not going to put this in the garage now, so I'll have room to do me uh, plastic welding on the headlight and so on. So we'll be uh, uploading video on that on Monday night. But for the time being, um, number plates are on. Oh, one other thing. First thing I did when I got it out of the garage was uh, attempted to pump the tyre up. Uh, no air will go into that tyre for some bizarre reason. Um, the tyre is, is, is quite bald in places anyway, so there's obviously something about it that won't work. I'm hoping it's not the wheel that's damaged. Uh, but I will take the wheel off and get it down to the tyre place um, next week and get a new tyre on it, which is a bit of a pain, but there you go. It needs, it needs a couple of new tyres anyway, so it won't hurt. they've got cheap tyres on them as well, so I'm going to get decent tyres. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll probably take that wheel off tomorrow 
uh, inspect the wheel, just have a look, see if I can see if there's any buckling or anything that is stopping the wheel from the tire from sealing. Because if that's the case, obviously it's going to need a new wheel. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed that uh, it is something just about the tire, whether there's a slash the other side of the tire. Couldn't he actually hear the air coming out. It was going in, but I just couldn't hear it coming out, but it just wasn't going up at all. Really weird. I mean, it could be something simple like the valve, I suppose, but we'll find out anyway. But I'm sure it won't be the end of the world. I'm quite optimistic. Even though I paid quite a lot of money for this car, and I'm finding more and more things now wrong with it, like those seatbelts. Uh, well, all we can hope is it's been serviced properly, but it will be going to the garage and getting a proper, proper service. I normally would service them myself, but I, and, and I could do, but I just want to track down the old service history, see what it has had, once I get the logbook through. Um, I look at the MOT history, uh, find out where it was bought from new. Normally what I do is I look at the number plates and you can see on there where it's come from. And then you ring up that garage, especially if it's a Fiat or a, a Bath dealer, and the chances are it's been uh, serviced there. So you get your service history from them. Um, no number plates on this, so I will have to ring up Fiat and ask them where it was bought new, which I've done before, uh, and then ring them up. So once I've tracked down the service history, see what service it's, services it's had, I will be taking it in for a major service. Even though it's only done 15,000 miles, I just want to get it completely checked over from top to bottom. Not by iBath, not by Fiat, because I haven't got their sort of money. Uh, and then uh, it'll be good to go then. Obviously, the um, something else I've just noticed. I think, actually, I think I may have done that, putting it into the garage. There's a crease in the door there. Oh, something else to be fixed. But I think I may have done that somewhere down here. There was something down here that first time that I put it in. It may have even been that handle. So yeah, I think I may have done that. Oh well. When I get a white car with a decent door, I'll swap the doors over. I'm not going to get one especially. It can stay like it for the time being. My own stupid fault. It wasn't like that before. Never mind. Anyway, I'm going to get the hoover out now and give it a good clean inside in the old bath now i've given it a bit of a clean inside stuck up an air freshener it smells a bit better in here and it's a little bit cleaner um i couldn't resist but plugging it into multi ecu scam so i've um connected to the uh airbag ecu and as you can see there driver's side airbag resistance yep obviously the airbag's gone um driver's pretensioner resistance now as far as i could see the pretensioner hadn't gone but it may have gone without it um, actually pulling the cable through. Uh, and the curtain airbag squib. Obviously, we know the curtain airbag's gone. Um, and then we've got driver side impact data, which is intermittent. Um, so I'm hoping that that will disappear when I do a clear codes in a second. Because uh, if it doesn't, because it's impact data, that may, may need to be uh, sent away to be reset, which is a pain. Um, I don't know why it's in blue. I don't know if it's in blue because it's intermittent. So hopefully, um, it does say there the fault is intermittent. Dashboard warning light was not activated, but as you can see, it says there light on. Um, the interesting thing about this is, as you know, both seatbelts have been cut. Now, I was under the impression that both seatbelts have probably been cut because they've both gone. But they're not showing up here. So I'm now wondering, I'm gonna, I need to do an HPI check on this, because um, it wasn't sold as a stolen recovered. But I'm beginning to think that maybe it was stolen. No number plates on it. Um, that does certainly look like knife marks there that someone's done. Um, yeah, but now the seatbelts are, are clearly not actually blown. Although they're no good because they've been cut. Um, why did someone cut the seatbelts? Also, interestingly enough, the, the seatbelt... Um, you know the plug bits that go in there both sides were in just loose you know just the actual mechanisms themselves not no no seat belt attached to it which would obviously stop the uh, the bonging of the um the, com the body computer that tells you that you've got no seat belt on so i've never heard of car thieves cutting seat belts before um but i'm now beginning to wonder whether it, it has been stolen car uh, if that's the case, I need to make sure that that, um, that is not still showing on HPI. Because one day when I do come to sell this, obviously I don't want it having a, having a stolen marker on it. So I need to sort that out ASAP. So, a bit of a mystery really. So I'm going to try and clear these codes anyway. Uh, where are we? Clear errors. 
I'm hoping that blue one goes. Obviously the others won't. Oh, it's come up no fault codes. How funny is that? Um, yeah, of course those ones will come back. Oh no, that's that's good. That blue one's not come back as it was intermittent. So um, that's good. That means that the ECU doesn't need to be taken out and reset. Unless of course it comes back on again. That's good. I'm pleased about that. Uh, so, as you know, I've got the curtain airbag. I think it's the right one. Um, I'm pretty sure it is. I won't know until I get the, the old one out because they're sort of, it's a bit difficult to tell which side's which and it, they have got serial numbers and, of course, the serial number would tell me which one it was, but I haven't looked that up. Uh, so I've got, I think I've got a pre-tensioner. Um, pretty certain I've got a pre-tensioner. Got the airbag for the seat. Driver's side airbag resistance, yeah, sorry, that's, of course, that's the, um, that's the seat one, isn't it? Driver's side airbag, yeah, that's the seat. I was just worried then for a minute it was the steering wheel one, but no, it's the seat one. Uh, so, yeah, so I've got, I've got all those airbags as far as I know. Uh, I haven't got, I've only got one seat belt, so I think what I might do is buy a set of seat belts and a set of, um, pretensioners, because you can get those quite cheap now. They seem to have gone right down in price and get the full set for a about 150 quid so i think i'm going to do that and save the ones i've got for for other cars that i do um i think that makes more sense so that's weird yeah so while i'm here um i'll disconnect from there i'm going to connect to the body computer uh, and see what we got coming up on that i just had because i just had this sneaking suspicion i just wanted to have a look and see what was coming up and my suspicions were sort of correct Connecting to ECU, so this is going to the body computer. See what comes up there, see if there's any errors on that. No fault codes, that's good. And service, now does the service, service interval reset. I don't know if this is just to reset it, I think it is. I'm sure there's somewhere that you can have a look and it tells you when it was serviced. I'm sure there was somewhere. I've seen it before. Maybe not, I might be imagining things. Let's see what this says. No, that's just to, that's literally just to um, reset it, isn't it? Yeah, so we won't worry about that for the time being. Uh, climate control, I don't need to, re to uh, go to those. Uh, what else we got? Let's have a look on the dashboard. I think that's all I need to. Let's make sure the blue and me is working as it should. Hopefully it will be. Takes a second before it connects. Sometimes it comes up about um, incorrect. Oh, no response from the module. Well, that's. Um, I wonder if that's because the stereo switched off. Let's switch it on. Let's switch it on and try again. Unless it's the wrong blue and me, of course. Must have blue and me, isn't it? The car. If it's faulty, it's faulty. I'll have to repair it, get a new one, whatever. I could be just connect. No. Oh, that's interesting. Oh yeah. Maybe that doesn't work either. Let's uh, try that one as a last resort. No, normally, if you connect to the wrong one, certainly on the body computer and airbag computer and so on, if you connect to the wrong one, it still actually does connect. But it's interesting that that's not connected. I assume these have got, yeah, they have got blue in there, haven't they? Because it's got the phone button. I suppose I should have to no response from module. I suppose I shall uh, have to uh, try connecting my phone to it and see what happens. So now I'm connecting to the instrument panel, which obviously means the speedo. Takes a second. Yeah, it comes up. I don't know why it comes up with that sometimes. I don't really know what that means, but I don't really care because you click on yes and it connects to it anyway. Hopefully no errors. No fault codes. Good. That's what we like to see. Odometers in miles. So you can adjust quite a lot of things. On this um, system on time, dashboard illumination, external temperature showing centigrade, battery voltage, it has me battery voltage, 12.2. So that should be okay. Fuel level, not very much, 10%. Ooh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some in anyway. Seatbelt alarm. See that seatbelt alarm enabled, you can disable that. Because if, if it was stolen, I don't suppose the thieves had multi-ECU scan, they could have just disabled it without cutting the bloody Seat belts, um, so you can deactivate it there. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be driving it, obviously, until I've got um, seat belts in it. Uh, so that's all I really wanted to have a look at. I suppose while we're here, let's connect to climate control. I've never done that before. Um, 
I think I've only had two or three cars with climate in the past and I've never touched wood it doesn't go wrong. I know they can go wrong. Um, it's obviously got its own ECU because it's electronic, isn't it? So invalid ISO code, whatever. Any errors? Nope, good. We like that. Oh yeah, it's got quite a lot of... Um, oh dear, it's got lots of stuff there, isn't it? I suppose it's... Yeah, it does quite a lot, doesn't it, I guess. Right, that's that then. So we disconnect from there. So yeah. The mystery deepens as to uh, the history of this car. Um, I might I might give the... Uh, as someone mentioned, there's a Mangaletsi sticker up there, if that's how you pronounce it. Mangaletsi, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, that sticker will... Uh, says about the last service, your next service is due, it says 16th of the 8th, 20. So it must, uh, 21,000 miles. So it's obviously not been uh, that long ago since it was serviced. Uh, it's a shame that the logbooks um, now don't give you the last owner's address because it'd be nice to speak to the last owner and get a bit of history. But of course we don't know that anymore. There's no way of finding out anymore. Um, obviously with the uh, data protection, especially the new GDPR or whatever it's called, um, you can find out even less now than you used to. The one good thing you can find out, though, is uh, you can find out where it was last MOT'd, find out where it was bought new, as I mentioned earlier on, and you can then uh, track down your service history, which is what I, what I do with um, all the cars I get that don't have uh, service history with them, which is quite a few of them. I always, only once or twice have I not been able to track it down. So that's it for now. Um, I'm just going to, uh, I'm not going to give it a wash. It's annoying about that tyre, but um, I'll have to take the wheel off tomorrow and then uh, organise to get a new tyre. Um, so that's it for now. Um, I'll come back. Um, the next thing you'll see from me will be on the pop, as I'll be on that Monday. As I said earlier, I should be working that Monday and upload a video on Monday. Going to get um, get the, the headlight, the uh, DRL sorted out, uh, get those lights in. I'm hoping the windscreens for the pop and the convertible will be done during the week. Uh, and then the convertible will be getting in a new um, cam belt and walk pump. Um, I've got a got an issue with the clutch with that. I'm gonna the clutch is really stiff and it's it's not slipping, but it, the the pedal travel is uh, not pedal travel. Sorry, the biting point is right at the top of the pedal travel. So I'm gonna do a bit of lubrication, see if that helps. Probably not. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the slave cylinder and master cylinder, see if that sorts it out. If not, it's gonna have to be a new clutch, unfortunately, which I don't want to do. Unnecessary expense. Uh, but you know, if it comes to it, that's what I'll do. So yeah, the Arbath, I'm going to leave the Arbath for the time being. It's a bit cleaner than it was inside. Got an air freshener. I might spray some smelly stuff around as well. And um, and then we'll uh, we'll come back to this. I want to try and get the pop finished first. Apart from bits and pieces on this, uh, I'm going to get, I want to get the pop done first. As long as I can get the windscreen done this week, then that can go off. Uh, that can be finished and go off. No, it's not getting an MOT actually. That one just needs a damn good clean. It needs a jet wash. It's very green in bits and pieces. And obviously this one needs a good wash as well. I did notice as I was going around this, um, I've, I've actually gone around the driver's door. Let me show you actually, if I can get out. Yeah, I've got the cutting compound out and I've gone over that door and I've got that scuffing off that was on there. So that's no longer there, which is good. Um, I've forgotten what I was gonna say now. Uh, yeah, no, completely forgot what I was going to say, not to worry. Anyway, that's it for the time being. I'm going to upload this uh, this evening, and um, then we'll see you again uh, Monday morning, uh, Monday night rather. Thanks for watching.